Hello, my name is Watson. All right. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just telling David, that's a very good video. It fits a lot of information in a very small amount of space. So uh, I'm David Kirkpatrick with Techonomy, and I'm here with David Kenny of IBM Watson. And David uh, has been a digital innovator for a very, very long time. He first was a co consultant at Bain, and then what, was, what year did you start Digitas? 96. In 96, he created Digitas, and ever since then, he says, his work has all been about algorithms in one form or another. Um, he also uh, ran, uh, he was president of Akamai for a while. He ran the weather company, the Weather Channel, uh, and now he's overseeing all of Watson and IBM's cloud businesses. Uh, but we're not going to talk much about cloud today. So IBM Watson is a major AI competitor. And one of the things we're going to really be talking about, and I'd like to start by asking David to explain, is how in the AI firmament, since it's also such a big priority for Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Facebook, how is IBM Watson different? Um, thanks, David. So uh, having watched the digital journey, I would say the digital transformation and then mobile, most of the value ended up with distribution. Search engines, social networks, big commerce play, because you could, be the, you could create the pinch point between the consumer and the content. And that's where all of them are heading with AI as well, to create an interface through a device in your home or through an interaction on your screen, but the value going to distribution in a commonly trained model. It's my view that it's time for the value to go to the content, that there are you know, thousands of companies in the world with lots of IP, cumulative history, great data and knowledge about their business, and they should be able to train their version of AI and keep it to themselves so that the value is actually in the answer to the question, not understanding the question. So that's been our approach. And it's, so it's a different approach to data. There isn't one Watson. There's an instance of Watson for every major client. They're training their own models and keeping their own insights for themselves. OK, like every great business person, you've gone instantly to your differentiated message. But, but just quickly, it is basically the case that you are competing, in effect, head to head with these other companies' AI services especially IBM and Google, and, and I guess those two in particular right now, right? Yeah, well, listen, I think uh, Alexa's doing some interesting things with skills. and That's what I, did I say, Alexa? You said Google. Google. So, so, Google and, and Amazon. Google and Amazon. And, yeah. and, uh, did I say Alexa? Wait, wait, but anyway, so um, yeah, and they're, they're tough competitors. They're very good at what they do. Um, I would say we have a, a, a difference in the way we approach data. But, but basically, if you're going to build AI, you end up, most people end up pulling some basic microservices and algorithms together. There's a lot of training that's already been done in order to have your version of AI learn your model, learn your domain, and interface naturally with your customers. OK, well, since I'm sure in this audience there are quite a few people who aren't experts in this kind of thing, why do you explain for a little while why AI matters in modern society? and what some of the examples are of what IBM Watson is enabling that wouldn't otherwise be possible. Well, listen, I think we've long had a dream that computers could think. And so the, the foundational technology um, has been neural networks, um, convolutional neural networks and recursive networks. And these have allowed us to think the way humans think. Up until cloud computing, it was expensive. So we, you know, we did this in brute force to play chess 22 years ago with Deep Blue. Um, we learned everything in Wikipedia, which is how we competed on Jeopardy. That was seven years ago. That was the last time Watson ran on a mainframe computer. Since then, it's all run in the cloud. And this intersection of cloud computing, mobile devices, more ubiquitous, has meant that everything can think. Um, and so as, as our phones become thinking devices, as our cars become thinking devices, as equipment becomes thinking devices, it's all going to change so that we're going to be surrounded by ambient computing and everything's going to be smarter and work better for us because it thinks. Um, and I think uh, this is going to change the way we do everything. It's going to change the way we deal with our health, the way we deal with our finances, the way we buy things, the way we communicate. Just talk about some specific examples where Watson is being used now that might even affect the people in the audience in some way. Yeah, so listen, Watson's been very good about learning expert systems. So we helped 
tens of millions of people file their taxes in the United States in a Watson application with H&R Block, which worked very successfully. They gained share for the first time in nearly a decade, so um, people loved it. It found deductions that the preparers weren't finding. Um, it's helping uh, radiologists read x-rays and MRIs, which is getting to faster diagnosis for breast cancer and other things. Um, healthcare is a huge part of huge. what your priorities. It, it, it helps match people to uh, clinical trials. It helps get the right diagnosis faster um, in oncology and cancer. It helps diabetes patients have better warning when they might have an event. Um, it's been great in the law. Um, it's helped people successfully fight six million dollars of parking tickets. Um, in an application that was built by a Stanford kid on the Watson platform. Who spoke at Techonomy. Go on. Right. Very good guy, right? So um, in, in law generally, it's helping to write briefs, do the work of the paralegal um, in bankruptcy cases so that uh, law firms can get to figuring out their, their trial strategies more quickly. So it's, it's really providing that base assistant level of work in a, in a number of domains, whether that be law, supply chain, um, tax, um, medical, et cetera. One you didn't mention that I, I'm very interested in and that I think it's quite important and also is the Internet of Things and managing the quantity of information that's coming out yeah. of these sensors that are proliferating across society. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I'm very, you know, I, I did weather because I wanted to work on, on a sensor network. So we're now putting sensors in everything. And, and um, so we want to measure the health of an elevator or an escalator. Sensors know what's coming and Watson models can help Kone know when they need to take preventative maintenance. Um, sensors in cars even will one day allow them to be driven autonomously, but already today they enable you to understand the health of the car and understand when to take preventative maintenance. The same thing for airplanes. Then we're putting sensors on supply chains, so all the food supply that goes through Walmart in China today, we've got sensors, we then use blockchain technology to, to know when those uh, packages when the when that food has gone from one source to another this is very important for just making a smart contract but in the event of food safety if, if there's a need to recall product you can know exactly which product from which farm in which store needs to be recalled but where's the AI in that so the the AI in that is understanding um, everything that the sensors tell you so it gives you the, the sense that this is a place where there may be a risk so be pro proactive in it. In, in effect, all these AI models are creating a weather forecast for everything, a predictive model of what's likely to happen next, and that allows you to take action more quickly. A weather forecast for everything is a very good phrase. Um, so if Watson won Jeopardy by being on a, hosted on a mainframe and now it's in the cloud, it is clearly a true platform at this point, right? And, and talk about that aspect of Watson, which you were talking about from at the very beginning, and, and why it's important to understand it as a platform, and again, how the way it works is different from other AIs. You said it before, but I think yeah, you yeah. should repeat so it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so, so fundamentally, a, a platform is something that people use and then contribute to, so it really becomes a community. So all of, all of the components of Watson are presented as microservices. You can have an API. You can compose your own software. And increasingly, there are developers and AI experts in every company. Um, and as they try to solve something, they can compose it real time um, using Watson, spin up an instance on the IBM cloud and make it operate. I think what's different is you have more control of your own version of AI when you're building on Watson. You're not just building an Alexa skill or a Watson skill. You're actually building your own model. And for a number of companies who want to protect their IP, protect their cumulative experience, we represent a better answer. To be clear, I think it's a very distinct AI for business model. I think we're much more focused on business applications. We're much more focused on professions and domains. I think the others are doing a great job with consumer interface, but consumerization has its limits. Everything we're doing is in the professional fields, and we're training Watson professional ethics. Okay, so um, one th given when companies use a, the, the uh, Watson platform in yeah. the way you just described, they still own the data that Watson is processing. Is that right? Is that the fundamental differentiator? Well, listen, I think everyone... Or control it in a fundamental way. I think it's also controlling the insights in the algorithm. So uh -huh. uh, most clouds 
will let you protect your data. Most clouds are not going to share private data from one client to another. Um, so I, I, I don't want to mischaracterize that. However, their algorithms, their models are trained in one place. So if you go to the privacy policies on, on Microsoft Azure, there's a whole list of very smart policies about the data. And then at the bottom it says, these do not apply to Microsoft Cognitive Services. And the reason for that is that the Cortana platform is one platform, so it's constantly training. We built a different platform which allows you to train your own instance and keep your own algorithm with your company. It's, now, it learns at a bit slower pace because it's only your data, but the flip side of it is you have an advantage that you can sustain. And I think as most companies have a vision of how they're going to compete in the cognitive era, they need to think about maintaining that proprietary advantage. So the point you're making would be then that if a company is worried about its own proprietary competitive advantage and privacy, you offer a differentiated benefit over your competitors. That's right. Yeah. We do. OK. You know what? I'd like to bring up uh, two other people, because we're going to have a couple of Watson customers join us who are building services on top of Watson. So where are they? Uh, Olivier and Jerome. Are, are, I thought they were in the Oh, there they are. It's, oh, the front they row. Are. it's a big front row. OK, come on up, guys. Uh, so we have Olivier Cortad of Mixity uh, on the left, with, and carrying something, and Jerome Chambeau of Skyply, which an American would pronounce Skiply. Um, yeah, let's hear it for the startups. Yay, two startups using Watson. OK, so uh, why don't we start with uh, Olivier and, and just talk about what, what is Mixity and how does it use Watson? In, in fact, we have developed a, a solution you can recognize. It's like Amazon Echo or Google Home. So, but it's an alternative to all the corporate who can't work with uh, Amazon or Google because of the problem of the privacy and the data. So we, we offer a white label uh, offer to the corporate, and this is why we are very happy to have integrate IBM Watson, because at the end, we have exactly the same clients with IBM. And we offer the capability to all the corporates to deploy some services with voice assistance, but not only because it's, it's the Mixipod, it's a real speaker. But as you have understood, you have the capability to add some extension on. So you can add hard disk drive. Uh, we are uh, uh, protocol agnostic. So that means if you decide to use our speaker at first to enter in your home, you have Watson already integrated in. So you, that means you can use Watson to um, control everything in your home, uh, but you can also use Watson and the voice recognition to be able to access to other services outside your home, like asking for a taxi or Uber, but all you to make your shopping list with. So this is, it's become your, your uh, main brain in your home, and uh, we want to let the user choose what he wants to do with, because you have seen the product, so you can create your own colon with the system. And we don't want to have many devices around. So we think that it's a good idea to have everything concentrate with the modularity of the product. But now, I, oh, you want to say but do you think it's just for the home? What I'm excited about with your approach is to have them in my conference room, to have them in the business. You are right. So this is exactly, we are in discussion with some corporate also who want to equip their own agency, for example, because with the system, you can also have VOIP communication with. You have also a video projector you can connect on, so you can also use a product to be able to make some learning to the clients, for example. You can use it as a conference room system, so you are right. So this is not only for any user customer uh, as a, a privacy, private customer, but it could also be a corporate company. But also from a business structure, going to some of the points David was making before, you work with a lot of big companies that might want to offer their services through this kind of interface but they see a particular advantage to your business model because you're working with Watson. And could you explain why that is? Sure. Um, in fact, we have exactly the same business model with uh, David because as, we, as he's explained, he wants the corporate to be ownership of the data. So why we have decided to choose the IBM uh, Watson uh, technology is because we can propose together the capability to keep the control of the data, to be able to learn with the usage of the customer, 
And at the end of the day, the corporate want to have also something which is completely customized. If you work with Google or if you want with Amazon or maybe another one, there is, they have less flexibility what we can propose together because each corporate is completely different. If, even if you are uh, uh, um, an insurance company you, uh, or you are a retailer, so you have different needs, you can have different usage around. And the, what we offer is to have the capability to completely customize the solution, not only with the brand, but also with all the services they want to propose around. But it's also, if I understand correctly, that if you're an insurance company or a retailer building for this kind of platform, the most important thing for you is that other retailers or insurance companies couldn't benefit from your own work. And your model helps ensure that, right? Exactly. Yeah, well that's a big difference. Okay, so Jerome, talk about what Skyply does. So we say Skyply even in France, so oh, you do? Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Somebody told me backstage <laughs> I was supposed to say Skyply. Okay. Um, so we collect around uh, 2 million uh, feedback uh, per month. Uh, until now, we were doing it with a connected button. I think you may see the smiley buttons uh, in the airports or in the uh, retail, in the shopping center, everywhere. And uh, now our customer was asking us, could, you go, could we go a step ahead and uh, ask for customer to leave a comment and then we could have a real-time analysis of the content of this comment. Because uh, um, I take an example, if uh, for Sodexo, uh, you have uh, 80, uh, 80 million of uh, customers each day, uh, if you collect the feedback on all these people, you need to hire a lot of people to treat that and we couldn't do it. Uh, with the, the normal way, and then we use Watson to analyze automatically and in real time those feedbacks. So you have a lot of domain knowledge in the areas yeah. where you work, like restaurants or hotels or airports, right? But the Watson element is what exactly in each of those applications? Yeah, it's very important because you, you can not uh, uh, understand the same thing uh, in a restaurant or in an airport. The same sentence, I take a simple sentence, the service was not good. If you are in a restaurant, it's quite easy. So you know it's a question of the, the waiter or the waitress. Uh, if you are in, a, in an airport, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, you can, there can be a lot of reason why the service was not good. So you need additional uh, information to take a decision to know what it's about. So you, can, you have to train Watson to, to become an expert of each domain. And it does it very well. So I guess the, the key thing that I'd like to talk about is, as we, we continue is, you know, what is the potentiality for society now that this kind of capability exists? Why don't you talk a little bit about that? I mean, and then maybe if, to the degree you can use these guys as examples of kinds of things that are going to be possible as we go forward. Well, listen, when I come back to a forecast for, for everything, yeah. if we have feedback about every point of contact, every restaurant, every customer, you can predict when things are working and you can predict what times of day, which staff, you may have issues. So you can take preventative action to improve your customer satisfaction. You can also, because he's reading all this data of real conversations, much more than the smiley button, you can come up with much better ideas on how to serve customers. So people should have far more personalized, far more valuable, far more efficient service than ever before. And I would say, you know, the, the idea to be able to have a conversation in your home, or I believe in your conference room, th this will eventually become a proactive tool. As they read the data, it's not just that Watson understands what you're saying, but Watson can pose the next question. This means it's part of the problem um, solving in your home about what to do next. Certainly it can be the problem solving in your office about you know creative suggestions, what can happen next. So you know, for me, we're augmenting human intelligence with some machine intelligence, which just allows everything to be more predictive of what's likely to happen in the future and more clear about which actions could change that future to make it better. And if we all live on that, I think we live a happier, healthier life. We end up with a better world because we're better solving problems proactively versus reacting once the problem started. Well, feel free to jump in any time, but you know, as somebody who says he's always been working with algorithms since 96, you know, the biggest challenge one might say that businesses are going to have and already have across the planet is the quantity of data that's being generated that they have to f somehow find insight from because everything is increasingly data rich, but the insights are in short supply. So um, 
it sounds to me like these kind of guys and what they're doing are great examples of companies that can apply a learning and a knowledge layer on top of the data that companies otherwise might have access to in some form but wouldn't know what to do with, which then, though, in turn accelerates the speed of business competition and probably the evolution of the companies that are your customers, right? Yeah. Uh, let's take a, another example. Uh, if you are a, a restaurant and uh, you want to know what had the best choice to propose to your, to your, your, your guests, and if you do only one survey per year at the, the classical method, you will never know what is really the best combination of uh, food that you should propose. If you use Watson, you will collect the data each day, and after a couple of weeks, you will see what are the parameters that influence the, 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 the choices. Uh, for, for instance, you will say, um, on, on Monday, uh, when the weather is bad, or when we are in summer, you should propose uh, a pizza with a steak, and if it's not available, you should propose a salad. And that's exactly what we are doing. So we solve real problems. I mean, we do not invent problems. We, we just we are looking for what is important for a customer and what, what is making him having a, a, a good ROI on the, on the system. And it works very well. It's just a simple question, uh, well-identified problem, and then it works well. Yes, you know, there is a joke with artificial intelligence. Everyone says that it will be maybe artificial, but not really so intelligent at the end. So this is a real question, at the, what we said. And what we have seen in Sir Watson is the capability to learn each day with the, the usage. So I'm thinking more about the home usage because this is where we are today. But we have seen that thanks to the technology and thanks to Watson, this is not only a voice recognition system. So this is, it's learned each day the capability to give you more services, more adaptability to your profile because, of course, thanks to the voice, we can also generate the profiling of the people, which is something quite important because maybe you don't want that your kids have access to the same services as you have, for example. There is a, a joke based on that with uh, Amazon and Google uh, during the Super Bowl, for example, and you have seen that uh, the best uh, uh, um, product coming from Amazon for Christmas time was a toy horse for the, for, the, for the girl, just because they say, hey, Alexia, I want this, and automatically Alexia, uh, Amazon send it automatically. There is no control. So this is also part of the intelligence of the Watson platform. So we can be able to create profiling by the voice. And that means we can create very specific advantage for each people living in a home. So if it's me who's coming, I don't have the same playlist from my son, for example, or from my wife. So each time I can learn and can propose you more things. And it becomes so evident because if what we are doing here, we are speaking, we are exchanging. We are asking a question and we have a feedback and we have an answer. So this is exactly why we think voice and intelligent artificials become a reality for everyone because now it's become so simple. You don't need any more remote control. You know, before integrating IBM Watson, we have developed a, a unique application you can use through an iPad or a smartphone and everyone or a PC. But now we say, of course, we need to have the apps because when you are outside your home, you need to use your apps. But using your voice internally, there is no more doubt that it becomes a reality for everyone. Yeah. So, David, I'm curious, you know, uh, you, you're a good big picture thinker. That's why you have this job, as well as not being bad at managing. I've known you a while. So, uh, when you sit back and really think about the potentiality of this business to really affect society and economic growth, how big of a deal do you think it is? I mean, not just Watson, but Watson as an example, and, and AI in broadly. Well, I think it's, it's huge. I mean, we, we have, the one thing we all have on Earth is our time. And how much of our time do we waste trying to get the data, sitting in traffic, being overwhelmed by communications, emails, texts, um, tweets, whatever, and we're not actually getting to decisions. I think having ambient computing, so everything is computing around us, really helps take all the rote tasks out of our lives and frees up the human capacity to think bigger. Um, so I think the challenge is actually training humans how to do that, um, training humans how to use their time more wisely, because what, what I believe is we're gonna take a lot of sort of rote tasks out of our lives and we're gonna do fewer things in bigger ways 
with more focus. And, I, and humans are going to be a big part of the future, but we can solve climate change issues. We can solve health issues. We can make sure people never get sick because they take preventative action. We can make sure there's never a traffic jam because it's managed. So I think by freeing up the human capacity to do bigger things, it's going to make life more interesting. It's going to make work more interesting. Um, and it's just going to take all the road tasks off our plates. Does that mean one of the primary skills of people in all areas of work is going to have to be in some way learning to work with AIs? Totally. I think we're going to have to get comfortable that we can talk to a machine in this form and it can talk back to us and we're going to have a dialogue. And trust its output, too. Well, trust and verify. I'm a big believer that we need to have transparency, that when, when Watson gives you an answer, I insist that we also tell you how we came to that answer. I don't want a black box. I do want us to maintain control of this as humans. I do think it's a really important part of ethics to be transparent. So it's trust and verify. But you do trust and verify. And then you begin to have a partnership between man and machine that can solve much bigger problems. Really quickly, and I know this is not what we really are here to talk about, and maybe you'll, I'll be in trouble for asking you, but where do you come down on this issue of the future of jobs in an AI-centric world? In just a quick summary of that. And we'll get rid of that request. Yeah, yeah, no, listen, I, I, I believe um, every big technology innovation that's changed agriculture, that's changed industry, has created more jobs than it consumed, but there is a transition. Yeah. Um, I think the same thing is true here. I think it's important that we, re we be responsible. I think it's important that we help manage the transition. I have no doubt, if I take a decade-long view, that more jobs will be created than consumed by AI, but there will be a transition period and we need to pay attention to that. That's good. I never even asked you that, but that's a great answer. So, Jerome, I wanted you to quickly, as we're wrapping, we're close to wrapping up time here, um, address the issue that I, I was talking about with, at more length with Olivier about how IBM's privacy and data control policies give you particular competitive advantage by working with IBM. Uh, we spend a lot of time training Watson to be an expert of the, of the domain of our customers. So for us, it's our assets. I mean, uh, knowing how we train Watson, what kind of data we enter into Watson. We spend money to collect this data. We, sp we spend money to uh, analyze the feedbacks. And I don't want that to be part of, a, uh, to be sent to someone else and used for my competitors, by my competitors, for instance. So for me, it's very important that I'm, I can own this data and use it for myself and capitalize on this. Uh, if, if I know um, how to understand people at the restaurant, I will sell it to all the other restaurants. And the, the job that, that I, I have done, I can use it again. And have, uh, that, that, that is, in my case, my business model. I think for Oliver, it's a little bit different. But for me, I want to own the data and sell it to uh, my customers. Interesting. Chris, quickly, Olivia, what's your point of view on the uh, jobs future, being an AI guy, you know, in your work, when you look at, are, are you worried? Are you like guaranteed basic income is going to be necessary kind of guy, or where do you come down on that? So, I, I think we are speaking about the future. So, and as we are startupper, so we like the future because we can project ourselves in new technology, new services, new idea. When we, you know, we, we think about intelligence, artificial intelligence for many years, and we have many movies coming for more than 30 years, and we never see if it was a reality or not at that time, and now it's become. If you went during CES Las Vegas this year, you have seen that it's become not only an idea we can project ourselves in something maybe could happen, it's already down, it's already here. So what we have to do, are we, are we going out of this area, but I think at the end of the day it's become your reality, it's become our reality. You know, we have all kids. See the way of your kids are going very fast on that. I think this is our reality today and it will become more reality for tomorrow. And I think all of, your, all of us, need, we need to live with this reality because it changed part of our life. So do we need to be afraid about that? Not sure, because at the end, our parents are afraid about many things concerning all new technology we have access to. We can be anxious about the new technology is coming. Personally, I'm more confident about the technology and intelligence artificial could, could help us to live better in the future, so and now. So Great. So we've really run out of time. But, uh, did, uh, I would just say if you're worried about it, your best defense is offense. Go learn about AI. We, we have lots of companies developing on the platform dig into it. The best, 
the best way to make sure you have a job in the future is make sure you've got current skills. So there aren't enough people doing AI development today. I would encourage more people to lean in. There's absolutely great things to create like these guys. And you're finding lots of startups are interested in doing that and working with, with you guys increasingly, right? It's what's driving all my growth. But, yeah. uh, and it's not just startups, it's people inside big enterprises yeah. deciding to, to transform them and, and disrupt themselves. But I, I think this is a technology it's important to lean into, not wait until it happens to you. Terrific. Own this. Thank you so much, David. Well, Olivia, thank, you so thank you so much. Thanks. Take care.